Hey guys, my name is Rob. Welcome to Kinetic Rugby League. In this video, I'll be giving you my NRL Round 13 predictions. So here is a recap of last week. Just quickly accept that these weeks will happen. It was a poor week. I'm not happy about it. You guys aren't happy about it. But let's just forget it ever happened, right? Let's forget it. Let's just completely forget it, okay? Didn't happen. We've only got five games to worry about. We'll get 100%. No worries. And everyone will be none the wiser of what happened last week. So let's uh, crack on with the first game. Just as a quick disclaimer before I get on with these, I'm going on holiday tomorrow, so that's why I can't really record once the team lists are out. I'm going to be traveling basically and absolutely knackered. So this is being recorded on a Monday. So what I'm going to be doing is using the sportingnews.com team lists or predicted team lists. And I'll use that just as a baseline, as like a reference point for these predictions. Sometimes I've done recordings on a Monday before the team list will come out. That's just because that's when I've got time to do it. Um, but yeah, I'll use these as a baseline. Hopefully it goes well. Um, but yeah, the predictions for next week's video won't be nearly as professional because I'll be away and it'll be recorded off my phone, unfortunately. But yeah, let's just uh, let's crack on with the first game. First off, we have the Eels taking on the Sharks, starting with the predicted team list of the Eels. In the backs, they have Clint Gutherson, Mike Acevo, Sean Russell, Bailey Simonson, Blaze Telangi, Dylan Brown, and Mitchell Moses. In the forwards would be Regan Campbell-Gillard, Joey Lusick, Junior Barlow, Bryce Cartwright, Kelma Telangi, and Ryan Matteson. And on the bench, possibly Brennan Hans, Sean Lane, Mark Hesse, Makatoa, and Joe Offengawi. So for Eels team news, there's a major decision looms for interim coach Trent Barrett with Clint Gutherson set to return from injury. The skipper's inclusion could see Blaise Salangi switch to the wing or Gutherson could be eased back in via the centres with Salangi keeping hold of the number one jersey. Dejan Assi will also drop out of the halves with Mitch Moses due to return, uh, finally return from injury. Regan Campbell-Gillard and Junior Barlow have been overlooked for blue selection so will start in the front row for their club. However, Jermaine Hopgood has received a call-up from Queensland, so will be replaced at lock. Ryan Matterson, who has missed past two matches due to illness, is likely to be the man to cover his absence. Kelma Tulangi started in the back row ahead of Sean Lane last week, and Barrett noticed that how uh, this is likely to continue, uh, with the latter being used through the middle. So that is the side of the Eels at the moment. On the side of the Sharks, the predicted team would be Will Kennedy, Sione Katoa, Jesse Ramian, Kale Ido, Ronaldo Molotalo, Daniel Atkinson, and Braden Trindle. In the forwards would be Thomas Hazelton, Blake Braley, Oregon Kafusi, Britton Nakora, Teague Wilton and Jack Williams. And on the bench, Sifa Talakai, um, Toby Rudolph, Royce Hunt and Tukuhau Tapua. And some of the Sharks team news there. So Nico Hines will be missing uh, for the Sharks um, as he seeks to bounce back from their horror loss to the Panthers. Yeah, horror loss. Uh, the New South Wales back... Uh, halfback will likely be replaced by Braden Trindle. Jack Williams is likely to get the nod at lock, with Cameron McInnes also called to the Blues camp for his Origin debut. Tony Rudolph could be uh, could be a chance to return from injury to make his uh, to make the bench alongside the likes of CSC Vitalikai and uh, Tapua. So that is the news of the Sharks as well. I think obviously having Gutherson and Moses back in there would be huge for the Eels. However. I don't think I don't think having Nico Hines missing is that big of a miss for two reasons. Number one, Braden Trindle, I think is an excellent player. And Daniel Atkinson has doing been doing a pretty decent job over the last couple of weeks. And I think that partnership will work pretty well. Also, potentially controversial, when Hines was missing for a few weeks last season, and that's when Braden Trindle got some more game time. The Sharks didn't look that much worse off, to be fair. Actually, they were about just as good with Hines as they were without Hines. The difference wasn't that great. So, I don't think he's going to be a huge miss. Cameron McInnes maybe offers, you know, that's going to be tricky without him possibly, but I don't think it's going to be a huge deal really. I think the Sharks will still be the better team. Having Mitchell Mose in there, if he is available, his kicking game will be helpful. Clint Gutherson attacking the edges will be helpful. But I think the Sharks, with Atkinson and Trindle, I think they'll control the game well enough. And on the edges, the Sharks just too strong. Now, it was an awful effort. A truly awful effort against the Panthers, I acknowledge that. But for me, that's a complete outlier. And I think they'll still be fine in this game. So I'm going to go with the Sharks to win 1-12 to points.
Next up, we have the Knights taking on the Bulldogs, starting with the predictive reports of the Knights. In the backs, they would have David Armstrong, Inari Tuala, Dane Gagai, Christian Mapapalangi. Nailed it. Nailed it. Greg Marju, Jack Coggett, and Jackson Hastings. In the forwards, they've had, they would have Jacob Saifiti, Jaden Braley, Leo Thompson, Tyson Frizzell, Dylan Lucas, and Adam Elliott. And on the bench would be Phoenix Crosland, Kai Pierce Paul, Daniel Saifiti, and Brody Jones. So for their report, Newcastle will return from their bye with Bradman Best joining Caelan Ponga and Tyson Gamble on the sidelines. Uh, Christian Mapapalangi could be drafted into the side for his first NRL game in two years, or Tom Jenkins could get the nod with Inari Tuala moving into the centres. David, uh, sorry, Daniel Saifiti uh, has served his one-match suspension and will return to the side, likely pushing Jack Hetherington out of the 17. On the side of the Bulldogs, their predicted team list would be Connor Tracy, Jacob Kiraz, Bronson Cherry, um, Gerald Skelton, Josh Adokar, Drew Hutchison and Toby Sexton. In the forwards would, would be uh, Max King, Reed Marnie, Sam Hughes, Jamin Salmon, Jacob Preston and Kurt Mann. And on the bench, uh, Bailey Hayward, Josh Curran, Curtis Morin and Poasa Farmasuli. I think I got that one. And the report there for the Bulldogs is that Canterbury will have to cope without their captain, Stephen Crichton, after he was picked for the Blues. Gerald Skelton could be rewarded for some strong recent uh, New South Wales Cup form with a place in the back line. Matt Burton has also been included in Maguire's extended squad and is likely to be replaced in the halves by Drew Hutchison or Blake Taff. Uh, Viliami Kikau has been sidelined with a fractured finger, uh, which will see Jacob Preston pushed into the starting side with uh, Farmer Suli and Liam Knight likely to be in contention for a spot um, on the pine. Interesting choice of words there. Uh, Kurt Mann. Uh, dropped out of the side last week, although could return to the side with Josh Curran remaining on the bench and Jake Turpin out of the 17. This is an interesting game because the Bulldogs put in a shift against um, against the Dragons. I just I wasn't really expecting. They were just they're really firing in attack and, and pretty strong in defence. I think the Knights are still a, a stronger team overall, but over the last few weeks the Knights have kept a lot of results very very close. So I think. With both teams having a few key players out, mostly key players missing on the Bulldogs side, I think the Knights should still be slight favourites here, but the Bulldogs certainly have plenty of players in there that can make it interesting. Um, they've got some decent individuals that on the edges that can really attack, like Bronson Jerry, I think, has been looking decent, and, and when you've got the pace of Josh Adokar in there, he can be scary, and Toby Sexton, short range kicking game, if he finds gaps and, and there's a few players of the Knights on the wings caught out of position, they can really thread that ball in behind and Josh Adokar will be ready to uh, snatch those up. As well as um, Jacob Kieran's as well. I think he can be a little bit overlooked from time to time. Uh, Connor Tracy, not normally the number one, has definitely played there a few times this season, but I think will continue to develop and feel more comfortable over time uh, getting used to that number one role in this system at least anyway. And... Yeah, slightly different spine than normal without Matt Burton. I think they'll still be somewhat similar to how they, they have been. But missing Crichton as well, his leadership in there and his intelligence on the edges is going to be a big miss. And the lack of, you know, uh, deathly kicking game from Matt Burton won't uh, help them either. But I think the Knights, based on the team selections available, are the stronger team on paper and just the stronger team so far this season. I think it'll be very, very, very close this week, but I'm going to go with the Knights to win 1-12 to points. Next up, we have the Panthers taking on the Dragons, starting with the reports of the Panthers. In the predicted team list, they would have Sonny Taruva, Jesse McLean, Isaac Tango, Tyron Peachy, and Paul Alamati, Jack Cole, and Brad Schneider. In the forwards would be Moses Liotta, Mitch Kenny, James Fisher-Harris, Scott Sorensen, Luke Garner, and Maverick Gaia. And on the bench, Dean Laurie, Lindsay Smith, Liam Henry, and Atavalu Lissati. First time I've heard his name. So Ivan Cleary will have to make some major changes as his side has been hit hard with origin selection and injury issues. Dylan Edwards would make his New South Wales debut after dislodging James Tedesco, the number one jersey, with Sonia Taruva likely to start at fullback for the Panthers. Jesse McLean is likely to be included in the back line with Tyrone Peachy, um, while Tyrone Peachy is likely to start in the centres, with Paul Adam Alamotti sliding onto the wing to replace Brian Toto. Nathan Cleary remains sidelined with Jerome Luai, uh, who has earned a New South Wales recall, um, which will force the Panthers to name a brand new halves partnership. Brad Schneider has missed the past few weeks due to a knee injury, but could return just in time to solve the headache with Jack Cole in doubt with a hamstring issue at 5.8. Uh, Dean Laurie could replace Cole in the halves, 
um, if he is ruled out, with Sonny Luke uh, having a chance um, to earn a bench spot if uh, that eventuates. Uh, the back row will also have a different look to the usual, with Liam Martin and Isaiah Yo also picked by Maguire. Luke Garner has missed out last week, but could return to the fray to start on, on an edge, while Maverick Guy could get the nod at lock. Matt Eisenhuth fell to HIA last week, so will not take his place uh, on the pine with uh, Lissati, uh, a chance to make his NRL debut off the bench. Now, for the side of the Dragons, the predicted team list would be Tyrell Sloan, uh, Christian T- uh, Tuopolotu, there we go, uh, Moses Suli, Savelio uh, Tamale, Michele Ravalawa, Cal Flanagan, and Jesse Marsh. In the forwards, Francis Molo, Jacob Little, Blake Laurie, Tom Eisenhuth, Raymond Faitella Mariner, and Jack DeBellin. And on the bench would be Farmanu Brown, Luciano Leilua, Ben Murdoch Masilla, and Ryan uh, Couchman. Kaufman. I can't remember. Now, the reports on the Dragons' side is that Shane Flanagan will have to make up some major changes with Zach Lomax, Ben Hunt, Jaden Sewer all missing due to origin selection. Meanwhile, Jack Bird has been sidelined with an ankle injury and Hame Selly will be out with a shoulder issue. Um, Tupolotu will replace Lomax on the wing with Tamale, who could earn his NRL debut in the centres um, as he likely completes, uh, competes for the spot um, with the Fagai Twins. Uh, Jesse Marshke will replace Hunt in the halves, although it is unclear whether he will take over at halfback or start at 5 8 with Carl Flanagan, Carl Flanagan given the reins. I hate doing all this stuff because it's like so unpredictable at the moment. Uh, Blake Laurie is likely to be promoted off the bench in place of Sele, whilst R- Raymond Fatella Mariner uh, will start in the back row in the absence of Sewer. And then Ben Murdoch Masilla is a strong chance of earning a spot on the pine and could be joined by Toby or Ryan Couchman. This one is all up in the air for me. This one is all over the place because you've got like two key players missing for the Dragons. So two key players missing for a poor team or a ton of key players missing for a great team. All this comes down to for me, and this is the way I'm looking at it. There is one guy that this really comes down to, and that is Brad Schneider. He is the difference in this game. Because... Without the four most key players for the Panthers, Yo, Edwards, Cleary, and Luai, it is all on him to control the game. I'm not expecting much from Cole, or even I think Laurie at six would be a really good option actually. But I think it's all about Brad Schneider's kicking game, because I can't remember who it was that he. I think it was maybe the Raiders. They had his first game against this season, or it's someone else. Just. When Nathan Cleary was first out, he took over that number seven jersey and just just demolished the opposition with his kicking game. So as long as they're completing sets and they get good field position, Schneider's short-range kicking game could be devastating for the Dragons to deal with. I still like the Dragons' energy, and they still offer some good moments here and there. But for me, I think it's all about Brad Schneider. And Sonia Taruva at fullback... Oh my god, I think he's so underrated at times. Such a reliable player. The first time I ever saw Taruva was for Fiji in the Rugby League World Cup. And as soon as I saw him, I thought, this kid is special. He's such a reliable player. Plays with so much energy. Puts the weight of the world on his shoulders. And just launches. I think Taruva at fullback would do wonders for this team. But I think it all comes down to Brad Schneider. If he is on point... The Panthers will be fine. If he's off, I think the Dragons will be fine. It's all about Schneider for me, and I'm going to back him in this one. But I think it'll be massively close, and I wouldn't be surprised if it did go the other way. But I'm going to go with the Panthers to win 1-12 to points. Next up, we have the Dolphins taking on the Raiders, starting with the reports of the Dolphins. Their predicted team list would be Trey Fuller, Jermaine Asako, Jake Avarillo, Herbie Farmworth, Jack Bostock, Cody Nicarima, and Isaiah Katoa in the backs. In the forwards would be Jesse Bromwich, Jeremy Marshall King, Mark Nichols, Felice Cafusi, Ewan Aitken, and Max Plath. And on the bench, Josh Kerr, Kenny Bromwich, Ray Stone, and Connolly Lemuelu. So their report includes that Hamiso Tabai Fidel will be replaced at fullback by Trey Fuller after he was picked for uh, the Maroon side. Felice Kafusi was also named in the extended squad for Queensland, but is likely going to be able to feature for the Dolphins. However, if he is promoted into Billy Slater's starting side, Conley Lemuelo will start in the back row, and Kurt Donahue is likely to be added to the bench. 
On the side of the Raiders, their team would include Jordan Rappin and Nick Kotrick, Matthew Timoko, Sebastian Chris, Xavier Savage, Ethan Strange and Kyle Weeks. In the forwards would be Josh Papali'i, Danny Levy, Joseph Tarpany, Atta Moriata, Elliot Whitehead and Morgan Smithies. And on the bench, Tom Starling, Emery Gula, Trey Mooney and Peter Holler. Their report includes that Hudson Young has been recalled into the New South Wales side and will be replaced in the Canberra side by Josh Papali'i, uh, who has served his one-match suspension from Magic Round. Um... Atamoriata could start in the back row in Young's absence, while Papali'i's inclusion will see Emre Gula drop to the bench. I think this is probably the most normal-looking game of the round, because the Dolphins team isn't that different, plus they've also played without Hamas Otabai Fidel for a good few weeks as well, um, and the Raiders have had to deal without Jamal Fogarty for a good few weeks. So... This is probably the most normal game of the round. Actually, well, Eels and Sharks is fairly normal, but this one seems pretty standard to me. The Dolphins, I thought they could get it done against the Warriors, but clearly not. The Raiders, they've actually been doing fairly well without Jamal Fogarty. Obviously, battered against the Roosters, but I think they're doing okay. They're doing fine. I liked what the Raiders produced early on in this season, and they're still doing some good things, but I think the fact that you know, Tabai Fidal is a big miss for the Dolphins, but Fuller was so exciting when he came in. And I feel like it's a little bit hard done by because it's always like, you know, when Tabai Fidal is, is, is available, of course he's going to come back in. But then you're missing out on Trey Fuller. It's like, where does he fit in? Does he get a chance? Unfortunately not. But it's games like these where all Trey Fuller can do is play to the best of his ability and hope... And just hope that it's at some point good enough to say, you know what, Hammer, we don't need you back in. We just don't. Or they move someone else, someone else around. Um, but I think Trey Fuller will be a huge difference maker in this game with the kind of energy and the intent that he's going to provide. I think the spine overall looks really strong for the Dolphins and players on the edges will be uh, firing as normal. Uh, for the Raiders, I still think there are times where they lose a little bit of sting out of their control in games, having weeks over Fogarty, but I still think they will create opportunities, they will find ways to score, but I think the Dolphins will be ready to turn things around this week. So I'm going to go with the Dolphins to win 1-12 to points. Finally for this round, we have the Roosters taking on the Cowboys in the predicted team list of the Roosters. It would include James Tedesco, Daniel Tupo, Fetalega Paola, Joey Marnie, Dominic Young, Luke Carey and Sam Walker. In the forwards would be Jared Warrior Hargreaves, Brandon Smith, Terrell May, Nat Butcher, Victor Radley, now Fahu White. And on the bench would be Sandon Smith, Satili Tupanua, Siwa Wong and Xavier Veya. I'm going to go with Vea for now. But the report of the Roosters is as follows. Trent Robinson will be able to call upon James Tedesco's services with the skipper missing out on origin selection. However, he does have plenty of other selection headaches with Sawali, Crichton and Lenu picked for the Blues and Collins named by the Maroons. Meanwhile, Luke Keary could yet feature in Maguire's side after he was named as a possible replacement for Nico Hines. Palga will replace Sawali in the back line while Sandon Smith will replace Keary if the veteran plays in origin. Terrell May is likely to start up front if Collins absent in Collins' absence, whilst Butcher or Tupanua will cover for Crichton. The bench will have a brand new look due to all of the upheaval, with Egan Butcher likely to also be out due to a knee injury. Siwa Wong and Xavier Vea could earn a spot in the 17. On the side of the Cowboys, the predicted team would be Scott Drinkwater, Braden Burns, Tom Chester, Viliami Vilea, Carl Felt, Jake. Uh, Clifford and Chad Townsend. In the forwards would be Jordan McLean, Jake Granville, Griffin Neem, uh, Kulikefu Finifeyuaki, Helam Luki, and Jason Taumalolo. And on the bench, Sam McIntyre, Thomas McKayley, Harrison Edwards, and Jamal Shibasaki. Now, the report for the Cowboys is as follows that Todd Payton has uh, some major decisions to make with a number of starts missing due to origin selection. Uh, Talangi, Holmes, and Dearden will be missing from the back line, whilst the forward stocks have also been hit with uh, Robson, Nanai, and Cotter also included in origin. Braden Burns and the returning Tom Chester will cover the absences of Talangi and Holmes, whilst Jake Clifford will partner Chad Townsend in the halves. Granville is likely to start at dummy half, while Finifeyuaki will replace Nanai in the starting side, with Luki switching over to the right edge. Jason Tamalolo will start at lock to cover the uh, cover for Cotter, and will likely captain the side with Dearden and Cotter out. 
In a much changed bench, bench Harrison Edwards and Jamal Shibasaki, oh my god, Shibasaki could be the new faces. We got there in the end. For me, this leans so heavily in favour of the Roosters, given their recent performances and how lacklustre the Cowboys have been. The Roosters could really demolish the Cowboys here, and I mean destroy them. I know there are a bunch of Roosters players missing, but if you look at the, the core players in this team, which players are more important to which side, oh my god, the Roosters could be in for a big one here. Because they are firing. They're on a different level right now. It is insane. The Cowboys, they have been a little bit off the mark for me. Even when they've had Drinkwater and Dearden and Townsend and Robson, they've just been a little bit off for me at times. I think Jake Clifford is a decent inclusion here. You know, he's been part of that system before. You know, he had a year out in Super League where I think he was pretty good for Hull FC. And I think he's I think he'll do fine. I think Jake Clifford will do just fine. But with so many changes to that back line, and you've still got um Manu in there and Young and Tupo, I think the back line of the Cowboys could get thrown around very easily. And if Kiri and Walker play together the way that they've been linking up, and with Tedesco, and Smith at 9, they will just continue to flourish. They will continue to flourish. And th this is one of those games where it's like, well, here's the proof that Tedesco should have been selected. I think Edwards would still be fine for New South Wales, by the way. But here's the reason why you should have picked me. Or Luke Keary saying, here's the reason why you should have picked me. All, all that good stuff. This is a good point of the season where, even though things are all over the place, this is where players say... Excuse me, I exist by the way, why am I not in the Origin team? It's a great time of the season. I think the players that could have been selected for the Roosters, even though there are so many that already have been, Kiri um, and Kiri and Tedesco will be like, mate, take a look at this guy. And the Cowboys missing so many key players is going to be so detrimental to them. And with so many changes to the back line... It's going to be tough. I think they've still got an absolutely massive forward pack. And if they are firing through the middle, if they can get that quick play, the ball speed, they could really turn the Roosters around. And they have a, a decent kicking game with Clifford and Townsend. They could put a lot of pressure on the Roosters here. They really could. So it's about the forwards just really setting that platform. And then Clifford and Townsend building off of the back of that. But with so many key players missing, I think as long as the Roosters get the basics right, they don't allow themselves to be completely overthrown through the middle. I think as the game goes on, they'll just get stronger and stronger and stronger. They'll be so potent with the ball, I think the Roosters will be completely fine in this game. So I'm going to go with the Roosters to win, 13+. plus. So to recap my predictions for this round, I'm going to take the Sharks, Knights, Panthers and Dolphins all to win by 1-12. to And I'm going to take the Roosters to win by 13+. plus. In terms of winner's confidence, I'm actually at about 65%. Now the reason for that is I think the Sharks game could go the other way. I think the Knights game could go the other way. And I think the, the Panthers game could go the other way. I'm pretty confident about the Dolphins. Even though I've gone with 1-12, to I'm still pretty confident with the Dolphins. And I'm very confident with the Roosters. So 65%, they easily could go the other way. The margin confidence, I'm at 95%. Because if I am correct with the winners here, I cannot see the Sharks beating that Eels team on paper by 13+, plus, even though they could. I can't see the Knights beating the Bulldogs by 13+. plus. I can't see the Panthers with so many players missing beating the Dragons significantly. I don't think the Dolphins would make it 13 plus against the Raiders, given how resilient the Raiders have been uh, without Jamal Fogarty and with a few changes in there. But the Roosters, 13 plus, is the one game I am so confident with the margin and the winner. I could not be more confident with that one. I'm 99.9% I'm .9 confident with the Roosters, 13 plus specifically. But but yeah, that is my that is my recap for this week. It's going to be a strange one, but I'm looking forward to it. So that is going to be it for my NRL round 13 predictions. If you have your own predictions, do let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know how you got on last week. Mine, my week was pretty poor, so hopefully you guys did fairly well. Won some money if you decided to bet. But if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new content. Another reminder, I will be on holiday for the next video. Apologies for this one, maybe not being as normal as the way I like typically do things. Just with Origin and having to go over different reports makes it you know, very difficult to go with my usual process. But yeah, if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date with new content. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.